Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. This is another video in the QSBI series, and today we will see the memory mapped mode. We will also see how to use the external flash memory as the internal, and how to run the application from the external flash. This is called execute in place, XIP. Watch the previous QSBO video if you haven't watched it yet. I am going to start with the same project, that I created last time. So let's open the cube IDE, and import the previous project. Here you can see, I have the same code that was present last time. Here we will not perform the read from QSBI, but instead we will enable the memory mapped mode. Once the memory is mapped, we can treat it as just like the internal memory. And in order to read the data, now I am simply using the mem copy function. Let's build and test it. Let's put a breakpoint in the while loop. We hit the breakpoint, that means all the functions were executed properly. If we check the buffer, here you can see the data that we wrote in the flash memory. The fact that we can use the mem copy function, means that the external flash is an internal memory now, and we can also view it in the memory window. Here you can see the data. Just to verify this whole process, I will not enable the memory mapped mode, and let's see what happens now. So we got the hard fault, and it is caused by the mem copy function. This is because we are trying to access the internal memory at a location, which is not internal. If you try to browse the memory region, you can see we can't access it. So we need to enable the memory mapped mode. Let me change this data a bit here. And this time we got the data in into the buffer. Also, we can access the memory in the memory window. But remember one thing, the memory map mode is for read only. Once the memory mapped mode is enabled, you cannot write the data to the flash. We will be using this mode, to either run the application from the external flash, or to increase the internal flash memory for our controller. Let's see how to use it. First of all, we will disable these function. Make sure you disable the chip erase function. This is because when we will load the application into the external flash, first this code will run, and then it will make a jump to the application. So if the chip erase is enabled, every time this code will run, it will erase the application code from the external flash. So make sure that chip erase it commented out. Alright, here we are defining a function, that will make the jump. Define the address of the QSBI here. Now after the memory mapped mode is enabled, 
disable the cache if you are using them. Next we will disable the sys tick interrupt. And finally the code to make the jump. Here we are setting the address for the reset handler. This one is the address for the stack pointer. And then we call jump to application to make the jump. Let's try to debug this to see what happens. I am putting a breakpoint at the jump function. As you can see we got into the hard fault, and this is ok. Since there is no executable code at the provided location yet. Alright, now we need to write some code, and store it into the QSBI memory. I am creating a new project for that. So choose the board, give the name, and click finish. First things first, select the proper clock. This application will execute from QSBI flash, so make sure the QSBI clock is same as the previous clock. Now we will enable the cache. Let's configure the MPU also. Enable the region. The address of the QSBI flash. As I mentioned in the previous video, the size is 16 megabytes. If you remember the memory configuration video from the Cortex M7 playlist, here I have explained the memory setups. We will set the normal region for the QSBI flash memory. So it should be cacheable and bufferable, with tex equal to zero. First, disable the instructions, and then set cacheable, and bufferable. We will create one more region in the same address. The size will only be 1 megabyte. And we will keep the same settings, just enable the instruction access. This is because, our code is going to execute from this flash, so we need the instruction access. So that's it for the MPU configuration. Now before setting anything up, make sure you enable the Quad SBI. Also make sure the pins are correct. We don't need to do any configuration for the QSBI. We are doing this so that we don't configure these pins for some other use, or else the QSBI communication will fail. Once all the setup is finished, disable the QSBI, as it is already enabled in the first part of the code. Alright, all the setup is finished, so click save to generate the project. Now here we will first edit this system file. Come to this system init function, and here we will reset the RCC configuration register. Next we need to relocate the vector table, and we will relocate it to the QSBI base. You can also provide the flash memory address here. That's it for this, let's go back to our main file. I will just write a simple code, where the counter will increment every second. So create a counter variable, and increment it inside the while loop. We need to do one last thing, and that is, to change the flash memory address to the QSBI flash memory. The size is 16 megabytes. Let's build it once to check for any errors. No errors and we are good to go. Here you can see the flash has been relocated, and so are the other things. Now if we want to debug this, 
we need to use the external loader. So go to the debug configuration, create a new configuration for this project. Now go to the debugger tab. Check the external loader, and click scan. Here you can see the list of all the loaders available. Here it is, N25Q for F7508. Click apply, and click debug. Notice that the debugger will not halt in the main function. But here we see the download is verified. You can just press the reset once, and now it came inside the main function. You can see the memory address here corresponds to the QSBI flash memory. Let's add the counter to the live expression. You can see the counter value is increasing. Also note the memory address. We can also browse the memory here. So the QSBI flash memory is working as our internal flash, and also we were able to execute a piece of code from it. This is very useful for some microcontrollers with low flash memory, like this one here itself. It only have 64 kilobytes of flash, which is not enough for majority of the things. So this way we can increase the flash memory. We saw that executing the code from external flash involves two things. The first is to initialize the QSBI, and set it in the memory mapped mode. And the second one is the code itself, which will execute from the flash memory. You need two different projects for these. But I think there is some way to make it work in a single project itself. I will try to look for it, and if I do succeed, I will release another video on it too. In the meantime, do let me know if you want to see the QSB a tutorial for MT25 flash memory on the H745 board. This is it for the video. The code will be updated on the GitHub, and the link is in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.